interview with uh, with Vera Powell uh, following the uh, American report and a report Vera that you were um, named in and uh, a report that it seems uh, took you by surprise what's your reaction been um, I'm especially extremely angry because what is written in that report is the opposite um, there has been uh, of, of who I am um, I got a letter in from those attorneys um, if I would be open to have um, to give my opinion on accusations. Nothing was written about the accus accusations. So immediately reacted and said, I want to have this meeting immediately. So um, <clears throat> this was in the evening. The next day we had a video call. I have asked for a video call because I wanted them to look me in the eyes and meet to them. There were four people in, in that panel. Uh, one did not switch on the camera. And um, they, um, they were sitting there to, well, to interview me. So I said, out of politeness, I didn't have to do that, but out of politeness, I'll let you know that I'm recording this talk because it is one against four. And um, this is something, if I'm accused of, some, of something and they investigate it, uh, that means it's a serious case. So I um, wanted to have it recorded so that my words would always be there in, in case it would be misinterpreted. Um, and they said, well, you're the first one who's asking that. I don't think that we agree with that. And I said, well, why not? We can't agree with that, uh, but I have to write to record it. We're here in Euro I'm here in Europe. And I have to re write to record. I don't know what your rules are, but here I don't even have to tell you. Um, <clears throat> so they said, we take a break. After 15 minutes, they came back and they said, we decided that you cannot record it. So I asked again if that was written somewhere. And they said, we stopped, the, we stopped this talk because clearly you do not um, uh, trust our objectivity. Poof, they didn't even say goodbye. They switched it off. So I tried to get in contact, they did not come back, and I decided to write uh, all my experiences that I have had in the NWSL, which was not very positive. Um, there's, and the there's a suggestion then, uh, from the report that you, you didn't cooperate with them. Yeah. Well, I cooperate in, in, in extremely. I've even done the interview by writing everything down that I've experienced in the NWSL, because still I did not know what, it, what this was about. Um, and now, the day before yesterday, they came out with a report. They didn't even email me or answer me or call me or that they had received it and whether they would take it on board or not. And clearly they did not take it on board because the accusations that are now coming out um, was things that I was explaining how I am working and it was the opposite in, in my writing to them. Um, one of the many things that I wrote because I didn't know what it was about. So also I had written down everything. So it was 13 pages that I handed in. So I cooperated in extremely way. They did not cooperate because they did not want me to record something that is, could change my life. Um, in that so report, the club, Houston Dash, have apologized for their actions of the coaches. You were one of the coaches. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel very, very offended by it because also Houston Dash, when I was there, after I left, now around this investigation, nobody ever asked to me if anything happened in that, in that direction. Um, and I never, <clears throat> I never punish, I never swear, I never shout. That is my, let's say, almost mantra. Um, and about what is written there, um, that players were too big, that players uh, had to lose weight, I never speak about losing weight. I always speak about healthy nutrition, feeding yourself enough, getting enough intake before the game, eating more, women in, in general don't eat enough, eating more, like I do now in Ireland also, um, after the game, eating enough for recovery, after every training session, getting protein shakes to get your, your muscles recovered. Um, so what is accused there they even said that i had said that you couldn't eat fruit because of the fruit sugar sugars and that would make you gain weight i mean what nonsense is that probably somebody had said one play and then they projected it to me but i have never ever said anything like that in fact when we have shorter fruit here i'm the first one to ask for more fruit okay can you 
examine your conscience, as it were, and look at your time in America and say, is there anything that you would have done differently? Because it wasn't, um, although successful on the field, it wasn't the best time of your career. Is that fair to say? Um, well, the, the, the results were very good. It started fantastically. We had um, a, a vibrant vibe around the team. Um, and there was one player saying uh, halfway the season, like, I've never felt so good in my life. I've never felt so strong, I've never felt so up for games, so sharp. At the end of the game, I feel I can play another game. Um, and this is the first time in my life that I'm not tired and at the end of the game, I can still make a difference. Um, so it, it went okay, it went very, very much ago. The, the performances went up, um, the, the team was, was molding, it was, and then suddenly things were changing because, I don't know, because I don't know. Um, and uh, players, one thing that I noticed when I started, players were always swearing at each other, was always abuse of referees, coaches swearing at players, players shouting back and swearing back, and I had to keep my assistants right to not abuse referees, to not abuse players. Um, so the atmosphere in the NWSL, in that sense, has not been my, the best uh, career in my life. Can I ask you about that? Because the report has serious, um, I suppose, allegations about a culture of misconduct in over half the clubs at the time yeah. in the NWSL? I can imagine that, but also players. And coaches have, have been uh, very vulnerable, but they have been part of it as well. The first few games I was just saying, what is happening here? Uh, Marta even, even went to the throat of one of our players. Um, they, we had to do tests that, that could harm, really harm players. I refused that and I got huge fines because I, I protected my players. Um, so the, the, the general atmosphere in NWSL, that is right, something has to change there. But I have done... So there were also it, allegations of, of, of serious um, criminal offences, serious sexual yeah. Uh, allegations. Yeah, can you imagine how I feel that I've been on the barricades constantly to stop the abuse within the use and desk, between players, two referees, two opponents. Um, I've done everything, even, even in schedules and stuff, I've done everything to stop that. And being accused then of this is just, it, it hurts, of course, but it's so far away from the truth. It's just ridiculous. And considering what you've had to go through in your own personal journey recently, in your own personal life, um, how difficult has it been to face these allegations and to refute them as strongly as you have? What can you do now? Well, it hurts me, of course, more because I've been dealing 30 years with um, abuse of power, intimidation, framing, isolation, and everything that I've been uh, I've been telling. Um, so, my coaching is that I would never ever do that to players, and that is why whatever they do, I never punish. I never put a player on the bench because of behaviour. Never ever, even if everybody expects it, I do not do it. I do not swear at players. I do not. Um, uh, shout at players. Um, I always have respect and if there's, of course players, they're young people, they make mistakes but then we talk about it and their behaviour needs to improve. I've never put a player out of the team because of behaviour, never ever. And young players make mistakes so, um, and I respect that because players need to learn and I hope that these players are learning now but in the meantime they've really hurt me. But I've asked you about, you've refuted the allegations strongly, what more can you do to, to clear your name at this point? Um, I, I think the only thing at, at, that mo at this moment is being honest and open. Um, I, n I, I don't want to know weights, I don't want to know fat percentages. Um, I encourage players to eat more instead of less. But there is a point that I need to investigate if I need to take legal action to clear my name. And uh, my steps were first uh, dealing with the FAI because, um, of course, they took this very, very seriously. Uh, and I'm absolutely happy with that because if there would have been a sense of truth in it, then of course they should have questioned me and of course they were firm to me. Um, and, but they realized after talking to me and after what I showed, what I had written, what I had done, that it's absolutely rubbish. And especially there's one key player that um, has been contacted by a Dutch paper who said 
if this would not have been so seriously, I would have left because I've been every minute with you and nothing ever happened in that way. So, um, yeah, maybe legal action, but I've got no idea who who to take to court because is it the investigators, is it NWSL, is it the players, if it, if, is it people that talk rubbish on Twitter? I don't know. I've got no idea who and what. And uh, But I'm very, very grateful and happy that the FAI is open to me, that they did not jump to in, uh, conclusions before talking to me. At 12.30 in the morning I was having my meeting with Jonathan Hill because of course he was at the AGM. This morning we spoke a lot with the whole communications department, with the management, with the president, with, of course, jo Jonathan also, about, well, how to deal with it. And I said, I want to face the press, I want to be open as I am. And, um, yeah, it's tough, but I need to go through this. Considering the year you've had, the success in making history and qualifying, uh, considering the leadership that you showed in dealing with the dressing room incident, um, does this take the shine off your achievement this year for Ireland? It shouldn't be. It, sh it shouldn't be because it's rubbish. <laughs> but I cannot, probably, people need to, to trust me and believe me. Um, I hope it doesn't take off because those players deserve to get the absolute shine of what they have performed. They have made history, they've made the impossible possible. And together with my staff, we've supported that. Um, I hope that the Irish people uh, believe me and believe the player that has stand up for me. Um, and yeah, we need to move on and see where, where it goes, but I have nothing to hide. Um, and I'm so enthusiastic about this, this, uh, this team. Um, so yeah, I hope we get the space to, uh, to experience it to the full. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.